All right, well, welcome to the WebMap Social Meetup Group Podcast. This is Clay Burton, producer of this series, which is generously sponsored by Directions Magazine and Endpoint Environmental. Uh, this podcast focuses on learning, sharing, and networking around current and future geospatial and social networking applications and technology. We meet on the third Tuesday evening of every month at Google headquarters in Mountain View, California. This month's podcast features Amber Beek, founder of the Urban Forest Mapping Project. Amber shares about the project's impetus, germination, and where it stands today. She also offers a distinct business analysis of the project's marketability and monetization potential. This is a heartwarming presentation, which illustrates how global climate change can be addressed at the local level. Just a quick introduction. I'm Amber Beek, the founder of the Urban Forest Mapping Project. And what I'm going to be talking about today is giving you a little bit of background um, about the project, kind of where it evolved from, more or less, how it evolved, and what it is, and where it's going. And um, it is, it's something I've been working on for a number of years out of a need for good mapping solutions for the urban forestry industry. And initially, when I saw the needs and opportunities, the real big need was the disconnect between gray infrastructure and green infrastructure. And gray infrastructure is basically what you see in your city streets. For those of you who know San Francisco, you walk down Soma and you see very, very little green. And gray dominates the landscape. However, you go up to Golden Gate Park and it's a beautiful, lush, green landscape. However, in order for us to have healthy cities and healthy urban environments, we need the integration of gray into green and green into gray, and it needs to be spread out. We do need those open spaces, and we need trees and mini parks throughout our entire city. Um, there's also a lack of public participation in the community and urban planning process. Urban planners spend most of their time in rooms, on design charrettes, there is very little public participation, there's very little community participation, and you see the results of that happening all around the cities worldwide where low-income neighborhoods, for example, get dominated by green. There's no involvement, there's no ownership of local spaces. And there's also little public funding for green infrastructure. That's because city budgets look at green infrastructure, they look at sewers, they look at streets, they look at um, sidewalks, those are all very important. However, because there isn't a dollar asset value for green infrastructure, it's not incorporated into the larger city budgets. So when you're looking also on a larger scale, state and federal agencies are beginning to wonder how to manage their natural resources. And local resources are also included in those state resources and federal resources. And we're seeing some problems with our environmental crisis we're currently in, as well as the economic crisis, and federal and state agencies are beginning to turn to alternatives and opportunities to begin to generate revenue for land management. One of those revenue generators is um, our carbon markets. And right now, currently, 20 million trees um, sequester, and this is low ball, sequester 44 million tons of CO2 equal to $88 million on the Chicago Climate Exchange. And this is at the $2, um, $2 price per ton. However, it's estimated that within a few years that's gonna go up to um, $20 per ton. So over the, over the last 20 years, 20 million trees have been planted by community volunteers in the United States. And this is just an estimate. We really have no idea. This is based on um, the planting rates across different cities across the country, knowing that there's community participation in volunteer planting programs. What we have here is an opportunity to start capturing data, to start capturing information of community volunteerism and leveraging that so that cities can start um, adding that data to infrastructure, to um, databases so that they can start generating revenue through carbon sales or also even starting to do cost benefit analysis and really figure out where they're saving the most money by planting trees. For those of you who don't are familiar with trees, trees actually provide a whole host of benefits. Most of us are familiar with oxygen production or CO2 absorption, but they also do a very significant 
they play a significant role in reducing stormwater runoff, which mitigates some of the damages to storm drains and sewer systems. And this is actually very important and saves a lot of money for cities. Um, I did a little market survey to find out how many urban foresters there are across the country, and also how many of them would be interested in a tool that would map and track urban trees. Um, there's a huge opportunity here, and really there are only three full-scale inventories in the country, full-scale tree inventories. That is where somebody has gone out on the street, tree by tree, and has actually measured and captured information about those trees. Um, there are over 3,000 Tree City USAs. That means that there are 3,000 community vo and volunteer participant um, urban forestry programs across the country. And there's also 165 nonprofit community forestry programs. That is volunteer only versus um, city or municipality sponsored tree plant planting programs. Um, when I did the survey, I found out that the top feature that most users were interested in was the cost benefit analysis tool. What that told me was that there is a need to translate the value of trees into an economic value. Say, okay, well, how do we start thinking about our green infrastructure, our ecosystem assets, as in terms of dollars, and helping to make policy decisions around that? Um, there's also a need to know where those trees are, and that plays a key, a key role in this. The problems with existing tree tools is that there's a lack of mapping integration. Most tree tools don't actually use maps. So the problem is most people don't actually know where those trees are. So when they go back to prune the trees after 10 years of planting them, they have no idea which tree they're actually pruning, and whether or not they have the right information on those trees. Um, and so they have to guess based on an address and at one address, you can have 10 to 20 trees, and that's a big challenge. You don't know if the tree you planted died, or um, if it's doing well, or even if it's the same tree. Some people might have taken it out and planted something else. The user interfaces are clunky, they're hard to use. Um, they're not web-enabled, so you have to be at your desk in your city agency office. Um, you can't be out in the field using their, your inventory system. And there's also a lack of cost-benefit reporting. None of them are open source, and they're all very slow, and usually built in the 80s. Um, so when I was thinking about how we could solve these problems, uh, I was actually planting a tree one day, and I thought, gosh, wouldn't it be great if I could go home and enter my, the tree I just planted into this centralized wiki database and say, hey, here's a map of the tree I just planted today, and if everybody who was out planting those trees part of this volunteer program went and did the same thing, we would have this wealth of knowledge that's incredibly valuable. And so um, I got some people together and spent a few years um, putting together some information and we got some funding and then I have Catherine and Colleen join me in this project and um, we've been slowly moving forward, although we did receive funding from the state and it's on hold right now because the state's in budget crisis and we're looking forward to getting back to work soon. Um, the features of this project are it's mapping, um, it's open source, we use web-based data entry, we are using a shared database, and also um, it involves a cost-benefit analysis tool that was mostly developed by UC Davis and the Center for Urban Forest Research, and Colleen was actually very involved in the development of that tool. And it also has um, environmental analysis and ecosystem service valuation. And then it's also, since it's open source, it's, it's customizable. And, um, for those of you who are involved in the tech community, this is obviously a no-brainer, but for those of you who aren't, I want to make sure that you understand the reasons why we're doing what we're doing and why we're choosing open source technology. Um, primarily, we're doing this for public benefit. We see this tool not as, um, as you know, a get-rich-fast software tool. We're seeing this as a tool that actually supports community engagement that supports um, a long-term vision for how we want to see our cities and our communities and supports the idea that every citizen can make a difference and every citizen can get involved in shaping their future and shaping their communities. Um, we also believe that in that light of dem democratic uh, processes, we think that open source technology is the future. 
for democratic processes. And we also love the idea of engagement. We want to share our tool. We want people to develop 